In this episode of the Mitten Players podcast, I had the wonderful opportunity to speak with Nadina Hassan. From Ann Arbor, Michigan, this talented and adventurous actress has been involved in many different shows within the Great Lakes region, but you very well may recognize her as the Queen Bee Regina George in the first national tour of Mean Girls. What inspired you to do theater? Yeah, I started when I was like 10 years old, maybe, because I was about 10 years old. I did a play, I did a musical version of the Lorax in fourth grade. And in the middle school, I was just, I was not very good. I really just wanted to follow in my sister's footsteps who did. She was a beautiful classical singer and she was taking voice lessons and I just wanted to do everything she did. But there wasn't really, I didn't really show any signs of real talent until I think eighth grade. Um, and then I just kind of never stopped. I just fell in love with it and uh, playing roles that were unique and different and fun and commercial, not commercial. And I just, Ann Arbor is amazing. I'm sure you know it's amazing for the arts community. There's so much going on there. There's community theater. There's the high school theater that's really, really, really well known. And, and of course, the Michigan Musical Theater program is there. So just access to all of those things. I think it you know, different mentors in the area. I just kind of grabbed at any opportunity I could in the area. Before going to school, like going to college for theater, what was your favorite show you've been in? Before college? Before college. Guys and Dolls. I played Sarah Brown when I was a junior in high school. And there was, I just love that show. I want to do it again now that I'm like an adult. I want to do it again. I love that show. And it's so, it's so good to do too, because I mean, the ensemble is obviously huge. There's all of the gangsters and the, then the you know, the mission, mission people. And yeah, mm -hmm. that's a really good one. Correct me if I'm wrong, but you've done shows and workshops at the Wharton Center prior to Mean Girls, right? No, so actually I only have seen shows there. So my, my grandparents um, on my mom's side, they lived in East in Okemos and they mm -hmm. had season tickets to the Warren Center. And so when, since we were kids, they would take us to shows there. So I saw my first musical there when I was a kid. So going back there was just, it was really sad. That was an, an incredible week. Favorite musical? In the Heights. And then I think also, Tied his band's visit. That was a really emotional experience watching that show. I was crying the whole time. It was so good. Your dream role in the future? I have a lot of dream roles that exist now. Eliza and Hamilton, Jasmine and Aladdin, but I really want to originate something. And I this isn't, I guess, technically original, but I would love to see Encanto on the stage. And I would love to be Mirabel in, in Kanto. <laughs> it's kind of original, original Broadway. Original Broadway, yes. I feel like, yeah, I feel like they've been talking about bringing on Kanto on the stage. I mean, That's... just imagine, we don't talk about Bruno on the stage. They're right? all like a turntable. You can just see it now, can't you? The costumes, the color, I can see it all. Yes, yes. <laughs> what are some non-musical theater album recommendations for 2023? So this new album is amazing. It's a couple months ago with Demi Lovato's album. I think it's called Substance. Or no, I can't remember. Is it called? I can't remember what it's called. But her album from a couple months ago. Mm -hmm. <laughs> She's amazing. I love her voice. Or I love their voice. Um, I mean, I've been listening to Beyonce's album and it's a little older. I'm not sure what's coming around the pipeline in, in 2023. How did you book the Mean Girls National Tour? Yeah, so I um, I, I moved home after college because the pandemic hit. So I had a couple months of Zoom school. Um, and all my siblings and I lived at home again. It was so fun. We had such a full house. Um, and I think it was June or July of 2021, I got a self-tape request. I had just been auditioning for my bedroom for a year and a half, doing what, nearly 100 auditions in my bedroom. It was amazing. Um, and then I booked it. I did a, sorry, I did an initial self-tape out of my bedroom and I didn't hear back from it. I was just, you know, you do an audition and then you just forget about it because you just sort of let it go. You, you did your work, let it go. 
Um, I didn't really think about it for a while. And then I got a, a callback request like a month later, maybe a month and a half later. It was a, it, it was a little while. I think they had to put their search out. And so I went in person to do my audition in New York. So I flew to New York, which was really fun. It was my first time auditioning in person since in, I think about two years at that point since then. It was in, in school, I guess, was my last time. Um, and I did it for Casey Nicola, our director was there. And so we, the casting team was there and it was so much fun. Just having people like in front of you laughing after doing self tapes for a year and not having any sort of like any kind of feedback, visual or audible or whatever. Um, and I got to meet a bunch of them. And then I heard about three days later, I had flown home. So I was home by that point. It was like three days later, it was uh, late August. And I wasn't allowed to say anything for about a month because they wanted to announce on October 3rd. So we had to wait. But yeah, it was, it was a very secretive but exciting month. It was nice to have that time to kind of enjoy that privately with my family and my close friends and share that information, you know, before everybody else knew. So that was exciting. For yeah. sure, for sure. A favorite moment from the show? It can either be from you or just anything that happened in the show. I love watching... I don't get to watch the big group numbers much because I'm either changing, I'm not in them of course, but I'm, I'm either changing or it's happening behind me and I can't see. So when I get to watch our incredible ensemble do their thing, I just, it is astounding. I like to watch it roar at the beginning. I, sometimes I'll get my wing on really quickly so I can run upstairs and go watch. Um, I watch Fearless every night from the wings um because I'm not in that one but I have an entrance pretty soon after so I have I get to like be in the wings and watch everybody um so there are select moments that I really just love to watch as and enjoy as an audience member and as a fan of the show so yeah what would be or who would be your gender bend role in the show and why I think Damien what a fun role oh my gosh he's so hilarious so hilarious and so unapologetically himself. I think that would be a really fun one. Best way to keep your voice strong after a long night of singing, whether it be casually or professionally. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, we put our, our voice to the test in this job for sure. Just honestly, hydration, like over hydration, I drink a ridiculous amount of water. Electrolytes are really important to be able to absorb that water and get your um, sodium levels up. Humidifier, very important. I have a humidifier kind of everywhere I go. I have one in my dressing room, one in my dressing room, one right by my bed, all that. Um, a lot of sleep, a lot of sleep. Don't underestimate a good night of sleep. That'll that'll really be a good thing for you for your voice. For our viewers watching, why should people come see Mean Girls? I mean, it is such a fun show. It's it's so uh, uplifting, and people haven't seen a lot of shows in the past few years because we haven't been able to do any live theater. And it's funny. It's witty. It's relevant. It's relatable. Everybody's relatable, every character, which I love about the show because every single character is so different and you may relate to one maybe stronger than the other, but they're all representing all of us, you know, each there's a facet of everybody in each of them. So I think everybody will have something to take away and enjoy from it. And not to mention the songs are so fun and catchy. I mean, you said it better than I could. <laughs> Um, I'm sure you're excited about the movie that's coming out. So excited. I cannot wait. English and I were just talking about that. We can't wait to see it. We're going to have to like get together and watch it together. It's going to be so good. And I know they're, you know, they're making alterations and stuff to the script and songs and everything. And I can't wait to see what they do. I'm so excited. And the cast looks amazing. I can't wait to see it. Any advice for future actors who want to take their theater training to the next level, but haven't due to complications throughout the pandemic? That's a great question. 
Yeah, I mean, the pandemic definitely posed, you know, a lot of different new challenges for, for young artists. I would say working on your self-tapes, and they don't require a lot of fancy equipment, but just um, how to translate your work in an efficient way on a screen, because um, that is a new challenge and you know a new thing that we are going to take for the rest of forever with auditions. They're not they're not going away. Which personally, I love. I, I love self taping. I think it's convenient. It's nice for people if you're maybe in a different city for something. You can you know I'm like me. I can self tape on on the road. Um, but yeah, just really kind of working on that and, and, and practicing that. It's easy to practice. You can just set up your phone and perform your audition song and watch it back. And, you know, like athletes do, they watch tapes of their games, like same, same sort of thing. Yeah. How many songs would you recommend putting in your repertoire for auditions? I don't know if there's a finite number. I think I have maybe 10 to 12 personally. I don't think there's totally a finite number as long as you um, are very familiar with everything in your book and whether that means that you use one song for everything and it works every time or you have one for each kind, you know, type of musical, genre of musical. Um, I just would say familiarize yourself really well with those, those things and make sure at any time if somebody asks you to do something, you know, oh, exactly what song comes to mind, that kind of thing. Right, right. I do I do appreciate you taking your time and talking with me. Oh my gosh, my pleasure. Thank you so much for asking me to, you know, chat today. This is so fun. It's so fun to meet you. Of course. Same to you as well. One more question. Yeah. Where can we where can we find you on social media? Oh yes. Nadina Hassan on Instagram. Medina Hassan on Twitter too. I'm playing on Medina Hassan everywhere. <laughs> you should be able to find me from Nadina Hassan. That's me. Find me. I don't know if there are many Nadina Hassan, so you'll probably find me. The one and only Deans. That's right. <laughs> you take me and you'll 